Hi, this is Carl Lapierre. I'm at the Lapierre Equipment Facility here in St. Louis. Uh, today we're just going to uh, uh, showcase to you uh, how to start up an RO, how to install the membrane, the do's and downs. Uh, and uh, we're going to talk about a little bit too about uh, cleaning and maintaining your membrane and your RO. So uh, we're just going to soon start uh, to install the membrane and uh, we're going to uh, show you guys how to do it. So this is a, a Lapierre a Turbo 600 gallon. This is a deluxe model. So it's got only one membrane. Um, uh, if this would be set on the sugar bush, I would have made sure it is well drained. So put a brand new filter in there, a brand new wash filter in there. This one's come with a wash filter assembly. Uh, I inspected the, I would inspected the electrical panel. Make sure there's no uh, mouse nest in there or no, nothing funky in there. So just quick inspe inspection. And uh, we're gonna get ready to put the membrane in the vessel. So uh, we're just gonna move there soon. Hold on. Okay guys, so now we're getting ready to put the membrane in the membrane vessel. But prior to that, I want you to uh, make sure that the vessel is not stuck, the bearing are okay. This would be the proper way to uh, uh, store a high pressure membrane vessel like that would be upside down to make sure it drains properly and that uh, the motor is away from the ground, away from any humidity. Of course, I would rather have this on two uh, small pieces of wood so air can go under it. So before we put the membrane in, I want you to make sure that the motor spins freely so that there's no bearing issue, the seal is not stuck. So older generation use a flat screwdriver. The new one, you can just use a pair, a pair of pliers. This one spins very smoothly. Of course, it is brand new. If yours, you know, you'd feel a rattle as you spin it around, that would probably be a bearing. But if it's stuck, you know, and you have to put a lot of force to spin it, it's probably that the seal is stuck. So what I would recommend is you just go, you don't use a big hammer for that. You don't want to, don't want to damage it. So we just go, try and spin it again. Oh, a little bit more. And if it's still stuck there, flip it upside, flip it right, right side up. Plug the inlet using your the hose in your machine, and put a pail of warm water in there. You know, just to dissolve the sugar that could uh, get uh, the seal to stick. So once that's done, you leave it there for 15, 20 minutes. Once that is done, flip it again. Make sure it spins freely, if not, maybe a little bit more. And if you can't spin it freely or you feel rattling in there, uh, contact your dealer, you might have a bearing issue. So, from there we're getting ready to put the membrane in. So, let's just do it. This is a brand new membrane. Brand new membrane comes with preservative in there. So, uh, you want to rinse that out. That We're going to talk about that a little bit later on. So, let's take the membrane out. Up, up, up. This is the right way to do it. Okay, easy peasy. So brand new membrane. Some membrane have a flow direction on it. That the flow direction is for the recirculation. We know the Lapierre machine, the flow direction of the recirculation goes towards the motor. So the RO should be pointing toward the motor and the U-cup needs to be at that end too. So right now, brand new membrane, the U-cup is not at the right position. So using a small flat screwdriver, you take great care not to damage anything. Flip the membrane again. Our rose pointing up. U cup is gonna be at that end. So the U cup is like is like a skirt, you know. And on a on a Lapierre machine, you want it going down. So there you go. So I know it's difficult to see, but the U cup should be like that. The skirt should be pointing down. So now we need to put the plug in. Make sure you inspect it. You make sure you don't have anything funky in there, no cracks. The door rings are nice and smooth, not cracked. I use uh, Don Carning silicone, silicon based grease. Uh, please don't use Vaseline. Uh, you can use, you know, the white food grade grease. Don't apply too much in there, just a little bit to make it shiny and greasy. A little bit in there, just a little bit. You don't want to put too much. Just put it in there. Now for the recirculation funnel, perfect, double checking, arrow, and that is for an SPA4LD, this hydronetics membrane is the common membrane that uh, we use, so flow direction pointing toward the motor, that's the end of the motor, so we're just going to flip that down and put the membrane in, be right back. Okay, so we're ready to uh, put uh, the membrane in the vessel, so we check, make sure the motor was free, we uh, put our uh, 
uh, plug in there and everything. So gently lower that thing down. I use just one of these to help me get a little bit, a little bit of angle. And easy. I'm just gonna hold it with my finger here while I lift it up. Up, oh, it went down by itself. If it doesn't, you wanna spin it just a little and you're gonna hear it or feel it fall down. So it's right in place. Now we're just gonna put the cover, the lid on it, connect the hose and everything, and we'll get back to you. So here we are, uh, we're getting ready to start the unit. Um, the membrane is in the vessel, we connected everything. Uh, I didn't tighten those too much, we don't need to tighten those much. It's not the tightness that makes the seal, the seal is on an O-ring. Those holes, same thing, they're not over tightened. You can see that I did not connect the recirculation uh, motor on this, um, just to make sure that everything is well primed and well rinsed. Um, we do that, uh, I, I like to do that, you know, running in the wash tank, you know, in closed cycle to make sure that the machine is wet everywhere. A machine that was put on storage, even though it was drained properly, could, have, could still have a little bit of ice in the high pressure pump in the corners here and there. So just by recirculating water, we're going to make sure that everything is wet and uh, with no, uh, no ice, no nothing in there. So uh, uh, by the way, I primed, everything is primed in here. The, some of you guys might have difficulty to prime your feed, your feed pump or your RO itself. So I did that by removing the plug on the pump until I see, I see some water coming in. Um, if not, you can use that purge button right here, which is located on top of the filter. It, but I would recommend that if you have difficulty to prime your RO, you know, for the feed, you can put a T right here and put a valve on it, you know, and you just open the valve and you wait for the water to come and you just, you can just crack it and start the RO, but be careful, you're gonna get a splash if you start the RO with an open valve right here because it's on the pressure side. So we're just gonna close that up and start the RO only on uh, the uh, feed pump. Uh, you can maintain that button, you know, until you reach a minimum of 20 PSI that will lock the machine on, uh, on run. But if uh, you have trouble to uh, uh, start your RO, you can hold that button, you know, you won't damage anything, but don't hold it for too long. You know, five, 10 seconds is okay. But if you fail to uh, achieve any pressure after five, 10 seconds, there's something, there's a bubble in there. So make sure you purge it and restart again. So we're just gonna start it. I got the pressure up right away because I, all the air was purged. So I make sure, this is unwashed by the way, so I make sure that the water goes back to the wash tank. Water is going back to the wash tank, so we're gonna let that run, you know, for 15, 20 minutes, maybe half an hour, just to make sure that everything is wet, everything is well rinsed, and uh, from there, we're gonna drain that and uh, uh, finish the startup procedure. See you then. We're just done, you know, running the machine in a closed loop in the wash tank just to make sure that everything is wet, that if there would be a little bit of icing left in the pump, everything was cleared out. So now I'm gonna connect my recirculation. Once I restart the machine, make sure you check that the motor is spinning. You can put your hand under it and feel the end of the shaft. Uh, make sure that it is spinning uh, for upon the first startup. You never, you never know the connection could be bad. So it is connected. Uh, right now I'm feeding my machine, you know, with normal tap water uh, to rinse the preservative. This, this was a membrane that was uh, put in a preservative, so it needs to be rinsed. According to the, uh, bio, the organic norm in, in Canada, we need to rinse a membrane for the uh, total hourly volume of membrane. So this is a 600 gallon, so it needs to be rinsed for 600 gallon. Um, um, if you want more information, you can contact your uh, organic uh, certification body uh, or, or <clears throat> if you're organic. If not, um, I would recommend to rinse uh, a membrane for about five to 600 gallon. You know, too much rinse never hurt. Um, and if you have a bigger machine with more membrane, 
Well, five to 600 gallon plus maybe 50 to 100 gallon per additional membrane should be more than enough. By the way, uh, you can rinse with uh, well water or tap water, but make sure that you rinse with well water that's not uh, too, too, hard, too hard of a water, you know, it's not hard, too, uh, too hard. And if you use um, uh, a tap water, may, if, uh, if there's a little bit of chlorine smell to it, you want to let that water sit for, I would say, 24 to 48 hours prior to use it in an RO. Uh, uh, our membrane don't like uh, chlorine at all. So right now we are uh, fed with um, um, our rinse tank and um, we have plenty of water there to rinse, you know, for a, a membrane like that. So we're just gonna start it. Of course, a rinse is always done on wash cycle. I'm gonna put my five way valve here back to drain. Rinse goes to drain um, and we will just start the hour right now. It should start easily um, because it was well primed. So pressure gauge is there. I'm gonna make sure that recirculation is running. I can feel the shaft under it. So everything is well in there and we're just gonna let it run like that until it draws the entirety of the tank. And we'll get back to you for a little bit more info on the maintenance uh, after this. We're just done rinsing our, our machine, done rinsing the membrane. So I just want to talk a little bit further about, you know, the first startup and uh, washing the RO with soap. So, um, of course, upon a first startup, sometime you might see trace of sugar in your permeate. This being a one, uh, a membrane machine, I can test the total permeate. But on a multiple membrane machine, I would like to have individual individual sample kit so that I can test each and every membrane. If you see traces of sugar in the permeate, uh, 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 don't go panicking right away. You know, okay. Uh, sometimes uh, first startup after a membrane was put in storage, or sometime after a soap wash, you might see traces of sugar in the permeate. Okay, but. Um, you can see a point one, a point two. If you see something much, much bigger than that, we have another problem. It could be the O-rings are bad, the membrane could be bad too. But if it's just traces of sugar, point one, point two, and make sure you want to measure that with a precise, uh, a precise device. You know, those plungers, you know, those, those densimeters are not very precise. You know, those glass densimeters. So either a, a, a see-through refractor meter or a digital like that, uh, well calibrated. You know, uh, with uh, a distilled water, uh, those are very precise. So if you see traces of sugar, don't go panicking just right away. Keep running the machine for a couple hours, you know, two or three hours. And if uh, uh, the, 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 you see, still see traces of sugar and it didn't change, it's still the same, it can be a bad membrane, it could be bad O-ring. So before we go panicking, we take the membrane out, we inspect the O-ring, the O-ring at each end of the membrane, not the big one, but the one that goes in, that's usually where you see a sugar leak from. So the plug and the adapter on top, and if those are in good shape, you don't see cracks, well, it could be the membrane. So we can test it for you guys. You can send it to us, call your representative. Uh, your Lapierre dealer is gonna help you do that. Sometimes during sugaring it's difficult uh, because time is, a, is of the issue, but call us and we'll figure a way. From there, when you wanna wash your RO, I recommend you use uh, Ultrasil 10. This is the soap that we've been uh, recommending for many, many years. It's always been good to us. I personally, I run an hour, I, I've, been, I've been running an RO for many years. I always use that thing. Um, but you gotta respect the recipe, and the recipe is half a con. This is 1.13 kilogram. So half a container per membrane in 13 gallon water. Some people might think it's a lot, but we gotta supercharge the solution. Because if you don't put in, in pure water, it's very easy to influence the pH, you know. Just a little bit would make the pH go up. But once the dirt gets out of the membrane and mixed with it, the pH will go down. And if you don't finish your wash at least around 11.5 of pH, you don't have a good wash. That is for Lapierre uh, recommended membrane. If you bought some other membrane from other distributor, make sure you have the uh, technical data sheet to know what is the maximum pH you can wash a membrane at. This is a buffered soap. It will not go over 12. So I recommend that soap. I'd bet any membrane on it. So, and be wary of magical products that appear every year. So from there, once you did a soap wash, you gotta rinse the machine. Uh, according to the organic certification in Canada, it's gonna be, uh, you gotta rinse for 40 times the dead volume 
of the RO. Uh, we're just going to put the file on screen so you can uh, calculate your dead volume per membrane according to the machine you have. Uh, you can call your representative for some help if you have difficulty with that or talk with your uh, certification body. Uh, for those who are not organic, uh, my recommendation would be about five, 600 gallon per membrane and and one and 50 to 100 gallon more per additional membrane. So uh, three membrane RO would be about 800 gallon would be sufficient to me to rinse the soap out. But too much rinse never hurt. Never forget to rinse and uh, because soap left in the machine will give a very bad taste to maple syrup. So from there guys, I think we covered it, everything. If you have any more questions, you need any more help, you can call your Lapierre representative or you can call us directly at Lapierre and we'll do our best to help you. So remember, we're never further within the phone. Bye for now.